Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to be watching the 8th episode of Tenten. Last episode was a pretty good one because we got to see Yuffie pretty much fully on board the, the Ani's train, I guess you could say. Like getting up on stage with her to help her during the whole lecture thingy that she had to do. And really just making it her own in the sense of like, yeah, really convincing everyone about the, about the value of this. Even tackling, uh, you know kind of uh, elephant in the room topics as well, right? The thing that was like really caused those people to cope and seethe. But she presented a pretty good point and we'll, yeah, we'll see how things go from here. Definitely enjoyed how much Anis appreciated everything, right? Because she really needed somebody on her side for quite a while and, and now she's got that. So pretty good stuff. Now before I jump into it, a uh, fun little fact. I went to record this video and the microphone wasn't picking up my, my audio at all. Usually that's just because of some settings in OBS, like sometimes when I restart my computer. Always when I restart my computer, I have to like re-add my Blue Yeti mic as a as the audio device in the settings. So that's usually the problem, but it wasn't the problem this time. The problem this time is that somehow the cat hit the physical mute button on the microphone and muted the, muted the microphone. That, 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 was, that was rather impressive, honestly. But anyway, let's just jump into the episode and yeah, see where we should start off. And we'll end off eventually, so. Three, two, one, play. Okay, is it time for something? Yeah, how are you feeling? <laughs> Uh, you say that. Yeah, I don't like you taking care of things. That would do it. Oh, uh, that almost slightly jump scared me. Are you okay? Just holding some bread? I'm clearly a poor girl at... <laughs> Freaking giggling noble girls. The worst. Such punchable faces. But should he do it? It's a real question. That's not an incorrect statement, but that seemed a bit like a bad omen. Almost like a flower wilting sort of symbolism it could be. No. <laughs> Wrong answer. And yeah. And that's what brought us to here eventually. Got his cooties on it. That was obviously you know, a flashback Al Kun, but I feel like we haven't actually seen him in a bit, like doing anything. I mean, technically, he's not really done much in the show aside from the initial Yuffie character assassination at the party. Other than that, I suppose there's been a couple shots of him conspiracy ish kind of scenes, you know? Like, I think he said something, I don't even remember exactly what it was, during the initial dragon panic and stuff. But obviously we transitioned after that to Anis and Yuffie taking care of the problems, so. I don't think we ever got much follow-up follow to that.
Probably should have got my water before I started. Some of these shots just go by so quickly that you have to actually slow down the video to see them. <sighs> oh, hello, kitty cat. Don't scare her. She was admiring, admiring her own reflection. Understandable. You're gonna push a button, please, away from the keyboard. That is a tough pill to swallow. I. Definitely worse things being diagnosed with in life. They're, they're great people. <laughs> one cat on my lap, one on the computer. Jump back up there. But yeah, what, what would we do without Ilya? When cats want to be fed, they are very annoying. Nice little smile from Ilya there. Okay, that's concerning. Was that, a, was that an alarm going off? I guess we just have an alarm system. I have a magic alarm system, but... Hopefully this is nothing too bad. So it goes in the fridge instead. <laughs> Sauce, we got Yulia. Okay, yeah, things are definitely... This is like a straight-up attack, it seems like. Not just some random, you know, burglar. <laughs> oh, wow. Yulia's so cool. Princess carrying her out. A window, no less. And of course, Al Coon's behind it. That's what I figured. Is that an ice shard that popped out of the ground? Oh, ho, ho. Uh. Ooh, oh, that, ow, ow. That looked kind of bad. Duh. I hate it. Uh, kidnapping L Laney. <sighs> Oof! I, I mean, she's a vampire, so maybe that's not as bad as it looked. I mean, it might be just trying to take out the magic thingy in her. I, I assume is what was happening there. I... I don't know. I don't think he would just kill her there. <laughs> Meanwhile. Thank you. I do my best. <laughs> Please go away now. That's a name. Be more specific. <laughs> She looks so short next to him. Will you? Yeah, I really don't trust you. If 
fact, this whole thing could have been a, just a way to get her away from Lainey. <laughs> Please stop getting in my way. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> Definitely seems to be here to distract her, though. <laughs> like, do I need to take care of her for you? She's like, nah, I got this. Great look on her face. <sighs> Can somebody smack him? What's your, you know... Basis for that opinion. <laughs> There's the alarm. Okay, so he, that makes a bit more sense. I was a little bit confused, but... Yeah, all part of the plan. Keikaku Dori, even. The whole idea was to get her away from there. Like I thought. Yeah. Very transparent. <laughs> this freaking guy. <sighs> Somebody smack him. I don't even care who it is anymore. He does not know just when to shut up. Because you're trying to really piss her off. The problem is, you know, uh, you're triggering her, it's going to cause an issue. Which almost, you know, backs up what some of what he's saying, but oh damn. Ooh. <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh god, this feels so good to watch. Uh, I feel so much better now. Although this could be a problem. Yeah, I mean, you can try. When Gardrium Liviosa. Yuffie! Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Backing her up. Love these two. Almost a role reversal, her helping her get out of a sick situation. Uh, what's Tilty gonna do? <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> at least some of that dark-looking magic. <laughs> Sa. <laughs> Great zoom out there. Composite that magic, okay, I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> Baka Tilty. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about it until now, but she actually Tilty reminds me a little bit of Miracle from Rans Nine. There we go. Second dramatic window exit in one episode. But see what I mean? She was the one that, to whisk her away from the, the bad situation. Great to see how, yeah, it's a relationship where they mutually help each other, you know? Not like a one-sided thing. <laughs> now there's a man who's seething. Even if your plans weren't so messed up. Oh, 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 that face. I could just watch Tilty go wild and attack people all day. Because don't forget, she has a bit of reputation as well. So I don't want to piss her off. But looks like we arrived. 
Unfortunately... Oh, God. Uh, I mean, they're both seem alive. Uh, yeah, as I thought, he took the thingy. Okay. Is he gonna put it into himself? Uh, I mean, I think we did talk about this as a concept earlier. Uh, but, God, that's gotta hurt. You got a little bit of blood there. I don't even know if it's yours or not. Okay, did he just basically become a vampire? Is that how it works? But, uh, I mean, I think we saw her cough earlier, but is she going to be okay? Like right now, that's what I'm worrying most about. Like, Yelia should be fine. I'm not too worried about that, but... <sighs> yeah, just don't talk. Because that's just a giant gaping wound in her chest. Like, I know we have magic, but... Don't say that. Clearly. Do you? Yeah, what's what's Anna's gonna do? My cool new tattoo, don't be jealous. It's a good point, so I don't really know what he... I'm definitely not getting the big picture with his ideas here. I mean, if Anis already gave up her position, I mean, does it really matter? I don't think. Yeah, it says a guy you just ripped Madison out of the girl's chest and shoved into, into himself, calling somebody else a monster. Apparently, he considers that to be half hearted. A flashback.
He definitely seems misguided. You have no right to talk about rights. What an answer. And Ambus was almost over too. <laughs> what a line. Tell him. I don't, I don't think that's true. <laughs> yeah, here we go. And this was only a matter of time. Right, just something you take, you're not given. <laughs> And of course, I was waiting for it. The cut. Wait till next episode to see these two siblings clash in magical combat. But yeah, that magical tattoo of hers. Definitely a useful thing to have. The show is just so good at building up hype. <sighs> what is the third time you jumped on my lap in one episode? Say hi to the camera. Only for you. The sister and brother and for whom the crown is intended. Really makes it feel, sound like a fight, uh, you know, a battle of the throne, essentially. But we already had Anis to give, up, give it up, essentially, so, you know. Anyway, that was the 8th, right? 8th episode of 1010. Definitely another really good episode, which really shouldn't surprise anyone. So, we started off with a flashback, I believe, showcasing kind of some of the beginnings bet between Al Kuhn and L Lainey's uh, relationship, right? Giving a little bit of insight into his kind of general attitude, right? You know, showing a very clear disparity between the nobles and the, and the poor here, right? I mean, nothing shocking in there at all, but seemingly his he has an ambition to change the way things are. 
like I'm trying my best to understand exactly where he's coming from, right? <laughs> like, because uh, it seems like, you know, underneath everything, there's some good intentions there, but it's the classic, I'll become as power, you know, as powerful as, more powerful than anyone else, and I'll be able to make the world better on that basis. Like, that seems to be kind of the, the general framework, but I don't understand exactly how things would improve with him, you know, becoming a vampire, becoming more powerful, right? Like, he just, you know, you become powerful enough, you say I was going to be, everyone just falls in line. I mean, you already talked about when, with some force change and nobles not accepting it and an uprising, you know, revolt and all that. So, I don't really understand exactly what he's going for here, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to work, especially because Anis is... Uh, Staying in his way as a good older sister to, yeah, to teach him the error of his ways. But as far as the events of the episode, yeah, but it turns out the whole lecture thingy was just a plan to get Anis out of the way. And I actually figured that out quicker than I usually would, I feel like. You know, once uh, the one guy showed up and was very clearly trying to just be a distraction, I'm mean, pretty sure it was just when he mentioned something about... What was exactly what he said? Uh, some... Uh, but something about it being his idea or whatever, like there was something, some line of among that, among that idea. Once that was said, I pretty much put things together, right? I mean, the timing was just too perfect. Anis was away and all that. I was a little bit confused because they said something about an alarm and how she would be alerted and she would be on the way. But then when we actually transitioned over to the party. There was no urgency. She was just at the party. But then once we actually heard the alarm, I realized we flashed back just a little bit so we could see the moment of, you know, when things locked together, if that makes sense. And everything that yeah, made sense to me. But, uh, yeah, definitely being very heavy handed in trying to keep her there. But luckily, she had not only Yuffie, but Tilty as well to help her out and get out of there. So, who knows how things would have went otherwise. I mean, even so, she still arrived kind of too late ish. I mean, we had both Ilya and Lainey injured on the ground. Lainey, especially. Like, it's still questionable whether or not she's going to be okay. But also, the. Mag Magicide stolen. It's been inserted into Al. He's become a vampire. So, I mean, if Lainey lives, I guess she'll go back to being a normal girl, which would be good news. But again, that's if she lives, which it's up in the air right now. I'm still worried about that. Kind of forgot about it in the heat of things, but that's still in the back of my mind a problem. But yeah, it was so great when she flipped him over. Had the dragon tattoo, the power being unleashed. Tilty also using her dark stuff on people. Just in general, cinema cinematography of this show really is just so good. But, yeah, we eventually got back there. We had our conversation between siblings while Yuffie's doing her best to keep the injured from dying. But, and yeah, that pretty much was the episode. We just had the conversation between the two of them and I can't really do a good job of trying to summarize that. But clearly it's a, a clash of ideals, a clash of belief in how to handle things, how to do things. And after a conversation that made it clear they were not going to see eye to eye, we ended off with a just, you know, both, both parties posturing on both sides, powering up, you know, kind of Dragon Ball Z style or, you know, Fate style or whatever you want to call it, right? Some of the, some of the combat did give me Fate vibes for some reason. I don't know what it is about it, but it definitely did as I was watching it. I was so confused when he tore his clothes for like half a second until I realized, oh, he's going to just shove the thing inside of himself. Which, you know, at a certain point, why even bother just... Going to the clothes can be much different, much more difficult to get into his skin and everything else, so... I don't know, it looked more dramatic, so... I guess it's a good enough reason. But... It is interesting seeing Al's uh, attitude, you know, because, yeah, he has, he has his position because... Yuffie, or Anis gave it up essentially, right? And clearly people have, I mean, they talk about this in previous episodes, I'm pretty sure, but people think that she would have made a better ruler, but just the whole no magic thing complicates things. And of course, you just have her general personality, which is not super royalty-like, right? You know, not a stereotypical noble for the most part, as far as her personality and hobbies and whatnot. But... Just, yeah, I reject your definition. 
I just uh, I just want the next episode now. That's really what this, what this boils down to. Like, are we gonna get a several minute battle between the two of them? Because that would be such a such a thing to watch. One v one, sibling on sibling action. But but yeah, I think that's all I really got to see on the episode. Just eager to watch the next one. So thank you for watching, and hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.